Hi and welcome in this video. Today I show you how to take a very simple panorama photo. Maybe you've seen great panorama shots of an epic landscape in that nice panorama format you can perfectly print out and hang on top of your sofa in your living room or your bedroom or your toilet or wherever you want to just put it. And I show you that it's very simple and how you can very easily take a panorama shot like this as well, stitch it together afterwards in a program and then just yeah do whatever you like, print it or just look at it on your computer. So what you need for that is just a camera and the lens. You don't need a tripod, you can use a tripod, but for that simple technique here you don't need a tripod. First of all you go very wide angled and the more wide angled the better because the more you get already with just one shot in the frame. I'm right now for example on a 60 millimeter full frame that is something around 11 millimeter APS-C camera so yeah when you use something like a Sony a6000 or something that's then 11 or 10 millimeter um, in focal length and yeah you can use like whatever focal length you need just go wide angle. Then next thing I go on the brightest point and in my case it's the sun. The sun is yeah pretty up uh, right now. Usually I don't photograph in that light condition but I wait today uh, till the sun is setting so I said oh, it's perfect time to just shoot a video about a panorama and just uh, yeah get uh, rid of some time till I can get the perfect shot later with better light. So I go on the brightest point there is the sun. I go on f18, f20 something around that that my aperture is very closed and when the aperture is closed then the sun gets a star and that looks amazing especially in panorama shots. So f18, f20 something around this. Next is ISO 100 and then I just adjust the shutter speed and I go on 1 200s, 1 250s of a second of shutter speed so just that it's a good exposure in this direction. And this is very important. I'm in the manual mode and I don't switch my exposure when I go around in the panorama because that will mess the panorama up. I shoot in RAW and I usually set my white balance as well. Right now it's sunlight so it's very easy just set it on sunlight. You can use auto white balance when you use RAW but when you use JPEG pack mode or something don't use auto white balance because it might happen that you switch around in the panorama that you just tilt your camera and then it changes the white balance and then it's a mess to stitch it together afterwards in a program. I always recommend to shoot raw. Uh, you can get much more out of the raw image and later in the next video I will show you how to stitch everything together in a raw panorama so you can still use all your sliders all the white balance and stuff. Okay so this is now my settings I'm very wide angled as mentioned. I now focus you can use autofocus I use manual focus go on an infinity and now the important thing is I go in this direction this is my first shot and now I just tilt my camera around like this and take several shots and uh, every shot should lap over the other shot. So in each image there should be the same information that the program afterwards sees. Okay there's the information, there's the information that belongs together so I can make a panorama shot. I put my leveler in the camera on. That is a good helper if you don't have a level in your uh, camera. You can just use your grid lines, you can use your focus points maybe when you have them in your viewfinder and just look that it's leveled in one line maybe with the horizon or something and then you start with the first image. All right, everything is leveled. I just do it like this and I take the first shot. All right, and now I just remember uh, what is in my right corner. So I try to overlap one third of the image with the next image. So in this case, one third is the cliff there. Click, first shot, and now the second third is the cliff as well, but now in the left hand corner. Before it was in the right hand corner, now it's in the left hand corner. And I take the next shot. Still let it lap, still everything is leveled, that's what I want to do. And you can take 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 images, how much images you like. The more images you have, the better it is, but you don't need that many images. Always remember it's a lot of data and your program has to process all of your images and the more images you have, the longer it takes and it's not necessary that you take like 20 images of only 180 degrees or something in landscape mode. Um, totally enough to use maybe 5. 
or something. When you're very wide angled, that usually should work. The great thing now is you can not only do it in landscape mode, you can do it as well in portrait mode. And the advantage is that you get more in the frame because you tilt the camera around and you have the wide angle from top to bottom. So I will do the same shot, but now in portrait mode. And I just do the same. I start here and now the sun was in my uh, right and third and now it's in my left and third in the next image everything is leveled and now i just go on just go on just look that everything is leveled and then it's fine just go on and go on and that's it remember important don't change your exposure during the shot take everything leveled because when you don't do it leveled the panorama will look something like this or like this and then you have to crop to put everything in level again and then you just lose information or maybe yeah important stuff in the panorama itself um, use raw and then just have fun quick commercial if you want to learn more about landscape photography check out learnfromben.com this is my website and there we got full courses about landscape photography where I teach you all my techniques and we filmed a brand new course in Iceland and and there I teach you more advanced landscape photography techniques because this is a simple panorama technique as mentioned but there are more advanced techniques as well like vertical panoramas like this or just like this and with a tripod nodal adapter and all this stuff so check out learnfromben.com if you're interested in this and of course in the next video I will show you how to put everything together in Lightroom and in Photoshop it's very very simple uh, usually it's just one click but I show you how to yeah crop everything and yeah maybe squeeze everything together that you get a very nice panorama shot that you can print out for your wall that would be amazing if like everybody after the tutorial does some nice panorama shots and print it out and hang it on their wall in their toilet amazing life goal okay if you like this video hit thumbs up share it with your photography friend and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already I'll see you in the next video and i will do some nice panorama shots